Bye. For God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but shall have everlasting life. John 3, 16. Are you familiar with that? I think that's probably the first scripture that I ever learned, the first scripture that uh, I ever had to memorize. And it comes from this amazing moment, this conversation in the Bible that Jesus has with this prominent, wealthy, uh, prestigious Pharisee named Nicodemus. So we're going to jump right in into John chapter 3 says this. It says there was a prominent religious leader among the Jews named Nicodemus, who was part of the sect called the Pharisees and a member of the Jewish ruling council. So first off, Nicodemus, he is a man who's achieved great things. He's wealthy. He has reached the very pinnacle of his profession. Uh, he, his name, Nicodemus, means in Greek, it means the champion of the people. It means a victorious person among the people. And he was certainly that. He had proven what you could accomplish by working hard, by being diligent. And even in the area of his morality, he was right at the very top. And yet there was something missing. There was something that he longed for, that he saw was in the life of this radical rabbi from Nazareth that he decided he wanted to find out more about. And he goes to to see Jesus in the nighttime. He says, one night he discreetly came to Jesus and he said, Master, we know that you're a teacher from God for no one performs the miracles that you do unless God's power is with him. There's no sign of cynicism there. And you may have heard it said that, well, Nicodemus went in the nighttime because he was afraid of what other people would think. I don't really think that's true. You know, I believe Nicodemus went in the night time. It was very normal for people to meet in the night. I believe Jesus went, I believe Nicodemus went in the night time because he wanted to say, Jesus, I'm coming of my own accord. Uh, this is not official business. This is, this is because I want to know. And he comes with this kind of hunger. But I was really struck when I was reading this story about the fact that it was nighttime and that Jesus immediately tries to guide Nicodemus's eye towards the light in beautiful, poetic language. And the reality is, I don't know about you, but right now we are in a night season. This time, this moment feels dark. It feels... Uh, It feels painful. There's been some very difficult things that we have all been going through together with the pandemic and with things raging around the world. And yet I believe that right in this moment, in this season, God is on the move and God is speaking and God is inviting us into a conversation. On the day of recording today, it is actually Holocaust Memorial Day. And I'm reminded of this amazing quote by Elie Wiesel, Holocaust survivor. He said this, he said, night is purer than day. It's better for thinking, loving and dreaming. At night, everything is more intense, more true. The echo of words that have been spoken during the day takes on a new meaning at night. And in this night season where it's winter, we look around and it looks like there's death everywhere and where, there's, where nature isn't blossoming and where we feel locked in and where we feel closed down. I believe that there is so much going on behind the scenes. There is so much that is at work germinating within the soil naturally, but also within our lives as well. God is moving in this night season. And I love that we have this example of a moment where where God meets with this with this Pharisee in the night time. So I don't know, you, maybe you feel like you're in a night season right now. I believe that God wants to meet with you. And Jesus comes with just such beautiful intensity, but gentleness when he says to Nicodemus, Nicodemus, I, I get it, you've done so much. But Nicodemus, this isn't about what you can achieve. This isn't about who you are or what you have done. There is nothing that you could do that would cause me to love you anymore. And there is nothing that you could do that would cause me to love you any less. Nicodemus, what I am offering is a whole new way to be human. What Jesus is offering you and I isn't an add-on to our life. It isn't just to get a little bit of faith in there as, as an extra to everything else that we are. No, he invites us to be born again. And there's 
there's Jewish humor there where Nicodemus is like, what are you talking about? I'm an old man. I can't, how can I go back into my mother's womb? And Jesus is like, no, no, you know what I'm talking about, Nicodemus. And he would have known because in the Jewish nation, it would, the concept was very clear that to be born again was this idea that God was going to bring a regeneration and bring resurrection to the nation itself. And it was widely believed that that happened when they returned from Babylon. And yet Jesus is saying, no, Nicodemus, there's something beyond that. There's something beyond what you understand here. And so, and and he's saying to Nicodemus, it's not about what you can achieve. It's about what, it's about you trusting in me. And he gives this beautiful image. He says, just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so too will the son of man be lifted up. And you might be thinking, what on earth does that mean? What is that talking about? Well, there was this story when the children of Israel walked through the wilderness that they were attacked by serpents. And Moses is told to create this bronze serpent and to hold it up on a pole and that everybody that looked at this serpent would be healed. And I'm sure you're thinking, seriously, a serpent? Isn't that the symbol of all evil? Yes, but this wasn't just any serpent. It was a serpent made of bronze. And bronze in Jewish thinking was all about judgment. Bronze was made in the fire and it was all about something that had been judged. And so this was a symbol of the fact that sin and brokenness and that moment in the beginning where everything fell apart, it was a way of God saying, I am going to do something about this. And so Jesus says that in that same way, he would be lifted up on the cross. This must have been mind blowing to Nicodemus. And yet Jesus is saying the same thing. He's saying, look, in the same way as there was nothing that they could do to be healed, they just had to look and to trust. I am gonna be lifted up. And mankind just has to look to me and to trust. And I will be the answer to their brokenness. I will be the answer to their pain. I will be the answer to their failure. This is the promise that Jesus gives to you and to me. This is the invitation. This is the most important conversation that we could ever have. So my challenge to you, my challenge to me, is that we have that conversation with God, that we allow him to do that deep work within our hearts, that we look to him and to him alone to be the answer and that that would ignite such a passion and a fire within us that as we go out into the world, our very lives would inspire the questions and the conversations that will bring transformation to our world. God bless you. May you have the best week and may you have exciting conversations everywhere you go.